Let us pray. O oh, Almighty God, as we have come together to begin our meeting of the assembly, we humbly beseech you to grant to all our members the light and guidance of your Holy Spirit, that we may wisely take counsel together and come to such decisions as shall promote your glory and the well-being of all our citizens in this our land, so that peace and happiness, truth and justice may be enjoyed by all people. Grant this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oath of Allegiance of a New Member, Announcements by the Presiding Officer. Honorable Members, I wish to make the following announcement. I have received communication from the following members, the member for Bethel Montilvin, Assemblyman Handel Beckles, and the member for Bacolet Mount St. George, Assemblyman Joel Jack both requesting leave of absence from today's sitting. The leave which the members seek is granted. Assembly bills sent back from cabinet, assembly laws brought back from parliament, petitions, papers, presentation of reports from the dispute resolution commission, select committees, Questions to secretaries, requests for leave to move the adjournment on, of, the, of the assembly on definite matters of urgent public importance, statements by secretaries or assistant secretaries, personal explanations, introduction of bills, motions relating to the business or sittings of the assembly and moved by a secretary or assistant secretary, public business, Executive Council Business, motion. Leader of Assembly Business. Thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer. I stand to move a motion standing in my name, and I, I read, whereas the Aedes aegypti mosquito is a threat to the Caribbean region, as it is the main vector that transmits the viruses that cause dengue, chikungunya, and Zika. And whereas the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, has supported its member state by enhancing regional surveillance and the agency's capacity for vector-borne diseases testing by monitoring regional and global developments, partnering with regional and international stakeholders, and providing updates for agencies of health and other key stakeholders. And whereas the basic approach to vector-borne diseases is by controlling the proliferation of the vector, in this case, the Aedes aegypti mosquito, and whereas for years the Tobago House of Assembly has implemented numerous strategies which include controlling and monitoring of the vector, building public awareness for prevention, early detection, and support for victims, be it resolved that this house support the strong measures and strategies instituted by the Assembly to control the mosquito population on the island. And be it further result that this robust integrative management approach be sustained and intensified with the collaboration of all divisions of the Tobago House of Assembly and other government agencies. And be it further result that while the Tobago House of Assembly 
continues to fulfill its mandate in response to this threat that this House urge all residents to adopt appropriate measures to control the mosquito population, to prevent mosquito bites in at-risk individuals, especially pregnant women, and to collaborate in minimizing the potential dangers associated with this threat. Mr. Presiding Officer, the Aedes aegypti mosquito is the main vector that transmit the virus that causes dengue, yellow fever, chikungunya, and now Zika. The viruses are passed on to humans through the bites of an infective female Egypti mosquito, which mainly acquires the virus while feeding on the blood of an infected person. Mr. Presiding Officer, to successfully control the Aedes aegypti mosquito, one must first determine the factors that are contributing to its successful breeding. And so the female mosquito, Mr. Presiding Officer, is known to deposit its eggs in relatively clean, stagnant water. The lava and pupa also inhabit the water in which the eggs are deposited. Mr. Chip, <coughs> presiding officer, research done in Trinidad by D.A. Fox and D.D. Chadi and published in the American Journal of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene in 1997 has identified outdoor drums, water storage tanks, buckets, laundry tubs, discarded tires, drinks, drink bottles and cans as the most breeding areas for the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And so, Mr. Presiding Officer, outdoor drums, tubs, buckets, and small containers were found to account for over 90% of all Aedes aegypti pupa. It is reasonable to assume that these research results can be applied to the Tobago scenario because of the similar climate and culture of the people. Mr. Presiding Officer, while there is no case of Zika in Tobago, the Division of Health and Social Services is in a heightened state of preparedness as we intensify an island-wide mosquito control campaign to forestall the onset of the Zika virus. Mr. Presiding Officer, we now see the Aedes aegypti mosquito evolving. Its, generic com its genetic composition has been mutating. We now see the information from Puerto Rico states that the Aedes aegypti is breeding in sewer water. Now, traditionally, it was clear, stagnant, water. Now it is breeding in sewer water. This has caused us to increase our burial covers and latrine project in the public health uh, sector and strengthen our ties with stakeholders such as the Ministry of Health, the CARFA, the Caribbean Public Health Agency, and the University of the West Indies. Mr. Presiding Officer, flight range studies suggest that most female E. Aedes aegypti mosquito may spend their lifetime in or around the houses where they emerge as adults. And they usually fly an average of 400 meters. So this means that people 
rather than mosquitoes, rapidly moved the virus within and between communities and places. Mr. Presiding Officer, the Minister of Health has stated that Trinidad and Tobago has reported its first case of the Zika virus. And while there is no confirmed case of Zika in Tobago, we must know that this may just be a matter of time. Mr. Presiding Officer, this is a new disease, and it is not clear just how it will manifest in our population here in Tobago. According to WHO, the real problem with the Zika virus is who it affects and what consequential damage would occur as a result of somebody becoming infected with it. And so from the perspective of the health of the population, the most important people who will stand the consequential problem are the pregnant patients. In Tobago, we have an annual birth rate of approximately 1,000 to patients delivering live babies. Mr. Presiding Officer, at this moment, we have approximately 1,000 pregnant patients in Tobago who will be extremely worried now that the Zika virus is in Trinidad. Mr. Presiding Officer, as the Caribbean public health sector ramps up its response to the Zika virus in the region, we are strongly advising the adoption of personal protective measures to avoid mosquito bites and the reduction of mosquito breeding grounds here in Tobago. Mr. Presiding Officer, we have been meeting with the Tobago Public Health Emergency Response Team to reinforce preventive actions and response. And I must note that this started since January 2014. And so, Mr. Presiding Officer, the, we developed the protocols to treat with the impending arrival of Zika, of course, in terms of chikungunya and dengue, because all of these vector-borne diseases are carried by the Aedes aegypti mosquito. So out of, the, out, out of those protocols is the establishment of the rapid response team, which we trialed flawlessly on the 15th of February at the Darrell Spring and Environs community. Mr. Presiding Officer, the Zika alert call to action propelled us to develop the protocols to ease fear and tension and to focus resources and inject a sense of urgency into the fight against Zika and other vector-borne diseases here in Tobago. And so we developed the epidemiological surveillance plan, the operations plan, and the rapid response protocols. We are partnering with everyone, the Ministry of Health, CAFA, the University of the West Indies, as I said before, WHO, and every division in the Tobago House of Assembly. The division reported its plan of action to the Executive Council for approval, and we operationalized and action uh, the plans. Mr. Presiding Officer, the issue of mosquito or vector control, therefore, plays a very significant and a very an extremely important role. And so it is the Assembly's responsibility to deal with threats and to engage in the enabling and in enabling an environment which can deal with efficient approaches. It is the primary responsibility 
and obligation of the Secretary of Health to take the information to the people of Tobago. But it is not just the responsibility of the assembly. All of us, all of us have a responsibility to reduce and eliminate breeding sites here in Tobago. Our homes, our health facilities, the hotels, the tourism facilities, our ports of entry, and schools are among the key sites for ensuring mosquito control. Mr. Presiding Officer, the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, has supported its member states by enhancing regional surveillance and the agency's capacity for vector-borne diseases, testing by monitoring regional and global developments, partnering with regional and international stakeholders, and providing updates for agencies of health and other key stakeholders. And so, Mr. Presiding Officer, the only lab test for Zika in the Caribbean is CARFA. The Caribbean Public Health Agency is the single regional public health agency for the Caribbean. It was legally established in July 2011 by an intergovernmental agreement signed by the Caribbean community member states and began operations in January of 2013. Mr. Presiding Officer, the agency is the Caribbean region's collective response to strengthening and reorienting our health system approach so that we are equipped to address the changing nature of public health challenges. The approach is people-centered and evidence-based. Mr. Presiding Officer, what are the protocols we are using to protect our citizens here in Tobago? Public education as part of the integrated management system. It is a whole of the assembly and whole of society approach. And that is what we have started to do. We have started in the schools, in the communities, and in the health facilities. <coughs> Our message is don't get by it. You know, a number of people say, but the grammar is right. I say, the message is right. Don't get by it. Keep your surroundings clean. Mr. Presiding Officer, the protocols we have established are clear. The protocols are based on WHO and based on the integrated management system. The WHO protocols speak about source reduction, that if you are pregnant or thinking about being pregnant, use light, long clothing, cover your skin as much as possible, and use insect repellent on your exposed hands Cover yourselves. We are giving out free nets at all of our antenatal clinics. Of course, nothing is free. The assembly is paying for it. And that is a significant move to do all that we can to protect those populations. Mr. Presiding Officer, we continue to give this house the assurance that no stone is being left unturned to protect all of our people against Zika and other vector-borne diseases. We urge all of our citizens to follow the WHO protocols to treat with Zika. Mr. Presiding Officer, the integrated management system has different components. The ongoing components, which are health education and social communications, we are doing that. 
However, we need more funding to ramp up our media presence, and this is significant. We have to be at the face of our people all the time, to be there with them, to inform them, and to remind them. Mr. Presiding Officer, we have ramped up our surveillance. <coughs> our integrated vector management is ongoing. This has been an ongoing exercise since 2014. And so this vigilance has decreased our index, that is the number of mosquitoes on the island, to under the international standard of five to 2.5 in some instances, 2.8 in other cases, and the highest in the Scarborough and environs area with an index of about 4.3. And here I must commend the administrator and the public health sector, members of staff in the Division of Health and Social Services, as well, including CPEP. Uh, this organization that has helped tremendously with the public health sector to reduce the index of mosquitoes on the island. Mr. Presiding Officer, I must say that many people are beginning to heed the warnings and they are turning over their plant sources and they are cleaning. Nonetheless, I am seeking support of this house for the assembly to join the central government to currently review the regulation 27 as amended by the law revision act chapter 303 of the public health ordinance chapter 12 number 4 that public that public health ordinance is a 1979 ordinance which provides a penalty of a mere $500 with respect to people who fail to take precautionary measures with respect to the vector. Then, as associated with yellow fever only, the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And so the Ministry of the Attorney General is actively reviewing the laws as it relates to the regulations the public health ordinance regulations, and we must participate in this endeavor. Mr. Presiding Officer, persons seeking details about Zika, its signs and symptoms, its prevention and treatment can consult with nurses and doctors at their healthcare facility to ensure that they receive the appropriate information. The Office of the County Medical Officer of Health and the wider Public Health Services Department are also available to provide any further information. The contact numbers are as follows. Office of the County Medical Officer of Health, 639-3751-1. Six, seven. The Public Health Services Department, 639-64-639-1433 or 211. Mr. Presiding Officer, the fact that there is no specific treatment, vaccine, or preventive drug, CAFA has underscored the necessity to avoid contact with mosquitoes. Mr. Presiding Officer, actions in response to the threat of Zika that we have already taken include education of medical personnel on the clinical symptoms, case definition, management and reporting of suspected cases of Zika, the Tobago Public Health Emergency Response Team. They, have, they continue to hold meetings with relevant stakeholders, including the president of the Tobago Hotels Association, 
who was given information from members of his association, president of the, the members of the hotel association, and they were also asked to provide chemicals so public health can spray the establishments in an effort to help bolster confidence in our tourism product. Public health continues the white waste removal drive, as you recall, due during the Christmas season up to the end of December, and they will start again in March to remove white waste, the source for mosquito breeding. The public health has been conducting the shredding of tires on Mondays, on Monday, Tuesday, and yesterday of this week, which contributed to the removal of tires from around homes, which can collect water and serve as breeding grounds for mosquitoes. Public health has increased indoor residual spraying activities, which are proven more effective than fogging to control mosquito population levels. Mr. Presiding Officer, we acquired mosquito repellents. As you recalled, we did plan to use mosquito repellent stations during the carnival season. We now have um, repellents that we can distribute to vulnerable populations. We have placed banners at the airport and seaport as part of our Don't Get By campaign to inform persons how to get rid of mosquito breeding sites in and around their homes and protect themselves from being Mr. Presiding Officer, we have printed copy books to distribute at all schools which show how to identify potential mosquito breeding sites and how to prevent getting bitten. Perifocal workers are being trained to deliver messages to the community and the recruitment process has started for health education facilitators who will go out into the communities to help disseminate messages. Nonetheless, we have partnered with uh, organization divisions like community development, the communications team in all divisions. Uh, we have uh, met with the media, all to ensure that our door-to-door -door information is carried out for the education of our public. Mr. Presiding Officer, the staff of the Office of the County Medical Officer Health and the TRHA attended national symposium on H1N1 and Zika on Sunday, the 31st January at UWI in Trinidad as part of our partnership with UWI. And presentations were made by the CMO and experts from PAHO, CARFA, and UWI. And all persons who attended will be assisting in training of other medical staff who were unable to attend. Our communications department has met, as I said earlier, with communications officers of all of the other divisions to devise plan on how to disseminate information on Zika to all the, of the stakeholders. And this has started, for example, the electronic board at the Victor E. Bruce building displaying messages from the Don't Get By campaign. Mr. Presiding Officer, Facebook and DHSS website are being used to answer questions from members of the public. CMOH has attended the ongoing THA district meetings to do presentation on Zika and field questions from the members of the public. Mr. Presiding Officer, hotline and email addresses. Email address is available for the public to report incidents such as abandoned lots and so on. CPEP had been given the mandate to cut the grass in and clear all empty lots. 
with reference to the above and in accordance with our recommendations, I must say that we have followed the WHO, the CARFA, and the UWI, and Ministry of Health, in giving support to our programs here in Tobago. And so, we are updating the medical and nursing staff of the TRHA on case definitions, treatments, investigations, and reporting to the Office of the Chief Medical Officer Health as related to the Zika virus infection. Uh, we are strengthening the surveillance and community cover disease reporting from health facilities throughout Tobago. And we are moving forward to ensure that we control the mosquito on the island. And so other actions that would be implemented include the continued training of members of 211 on Zika so that the public can call the hotline for information. Symposium on H1N1 and Zika to be held at the Chopin Cultural Complex in collaboration with the University of the West Indies on Tuesday, the 15th of March, which will include a panel of experts who presented in Trinidad. And this will be open to all members of the public. Mr. Presiding Officer, posters and banners are, placed to, are to be placed in malls, banks, gas station, and so on. And the meetings will be continued with the principals in secondary schools to lecture on Zika, and that will be done on the 1st of March, on Tuesday, the 1st of March. And subsequent meetings will continue for principals and teachers. The sub-presiding officer, the actions to be uh, done for Zika preparedness and response activities, we spoke of the bed nets that have been sourced to give all pregnant women who attend the antenatal clinics and to elderly persons in homes for the aged. And ads have been developed for radio, of course. All of these would require uh, more funding. Health advisories have been developed for the newspaper and continue to have the information printed out there. And so the overall strategy is to educate all members of the public on Zika <coughs> and how to prevent the spread of Zika by eliminating mosquito breeding sites in and around their homes and by pre preventing mosquito bites, to increase social awareness to the public and to make them aware of their role in cleaning up their premises in order to eliminate the breeding sites for Aedes aegypti mosquito, to support members of the public by helping them identify breeding sites in and around their premises, to strengthen already ongoing public health actions to control mosquito population levels, to protect populations that may have adverse outcome from Zika infection, such as pregnant women, to ensure that questions and concerns from the public, from members of the public are correctly addressed in a timely manner as part of our risk community communication and to strengthen surveillance activities so that up-to-date information is readily available. Mr. Presiding Officer, again, we advise our public don't get back clean, your surroundings, remove the source of mosquito uh, breeding, keep in touch with your healthcare professionals, keep in touch with your healthcare facilities, and continue to ask questions when in doubt. And so, Mr. Presiding Officer, I beg to move this significant motion. Thank you. Members, the question has proposed, whereas the AG's Egyptian mosquito 
is a threat to, Caribbean, to the Caribbean region as it is the main vector that transmits the viruses that cause dengue, chikungunya, and Zika. And whereas the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, has supported its member states by enhancing regional surveillance and the agency's capacity for vector-borne disease testing by monitoring regional and global developments, partnering with regional and international stakeholders, and providing updates for agencies of health and other key stakeholders. And whereas the basic approach to vector-borne diseases is by controlling the proliferation of the vector, in this case, the Aedes aegypti mosquito, and whereas for years, the Tobago House of Assembly has implemented numerous strategies which include controlling and monitoring of the vector, building public awareness for prevention, early detection, and support for victims. Be it resolved that this House support the strong measures and strategies instituted by the Assembly to control the mosquito population on the island, and be it further resolved that this robust, integrative management approach be sustained and intensified with the collaboration of all divisions of the Tobago House of Assembly and other government agencies. And be it further resolved that while the Tobago House of Assembly continues to fulfill its mandate in response to this threat, that this House urge all residents to adopt appropriate measures to control the mosquito population, to prevent mosquito bites in at-risk individuals, especially pregnant women, and to collaborate in minimizing the potential dangers associated with this threat. Secretary, the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities. Thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer for recognizing me and giving me the opportunity to contribute to this motion. Let me, first of all, take the opportunity to congratulate the mover of the motion, the Secretary for Health and Social Services, Assemblywoman for Green Black Rock Spring Garden, for her, her, her very detailed and eloquent presentation. The motion is timely, because of course it's occurring at a time when the whole region and the well, a significant part of the world is expressing concerns about the Zika virus. But as the Secretary would have noted, the issue here really has to do with the Aedes aegypti mosquito, because Zika is not the only issue where, that, where that, that, uh, that the mosquito is concerned, but even more deadly um, diseases like dengue and more debilitating illnesses like chikungunya and so on. And I want to take the opportunity here to publicly congratulate the Division of Health and Social Services, the Secretary and her staff, especially those persons who operate um, as what you call perifocals and so on. I think they do a very wonderful job. And um, when the Secretary was noting about the, the level of the po mosquito population, the ages of the population that has fallen over the years, it certainly would be, they, they will have played a key role in that. I mean, I see them come around very regularly to, to, to our residents, and they're, they're very thorough, and, and they, they do a very good job. I, I think the division can also be commended for the what is doing in waste disposal, because again, I think the environment is critical to the management of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And so that this motion, while one may link it to what is happening now. I think it's really about the job that the division has been doing and the job that we need to continue doing in the weeks and the months ahead and so on. Because today, we know we, we, know we have, we, con we continue to get outbreaks of dengue and so on from time to time. As one, um, I think one, there's a gentle, uh, there's a doctor, and I think his name is uh, was named Larry Brilliant, would have said that, you know, um, that you can get you can get outbreaks, you know, as outbreaks are inevitable, outbreaks of disease, but epidemics are optional. And, and it means, therefore, that we have to continue to do the particular job at hand. The, the, the approach to controlling the Aedes aegypti mosquito is what is critical. 
And as the Secretary of Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities, we recognize that we have a responsibility given, to, we have a role to play, given that we have certain responsibilities where, where, where the island is concerned. And again, I want to commend the Secretary for the fact that she has reached out to, to, to the division in a co collaborative manner so that we can play our role in the fight against the control of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Uh, the division has responsibilities for sanitation along the roadsides throughout the island, and it has responsibilities for drainage um, in terms of managing a lot of, a lot of the water courses and so on. And therefore, that the division can play a critical role in this fight against the Aedes aegypti mosquito. The, we have to recognize that these diseases, and especially now that one is, more, is, is prominent in the news, have impacts for an island like Tobago, where we have a, an economy where our main, uh, the main part of our private sector depends upon tourism. And certainly, illnesses impact upon pers the, the, the willingness of persons to visit a destination. So that it, there are health issues and there are economic issues involved. And therefore, given our responsibility as a division, we have been seeking to ramp up our activities to treat with reducing the opportunities for breeding of the Aegis Egyptian mosquito. As I said, we have responsibility for drainage, we have responsibility for sanitation. So that if we maintain the, the, the virtues of the roadway um, and we remove the, any, any, any debris and so on that's there that can especially contain, any kind of container that can um, serve as a breeding ground if we do our, if we do our job regularly and, and treat the vegetation and so on. That helps. And also if we, if we work in terms of the drainage, try and keeping all water courses clear so that you don't have um, water settling and creating stagnant situations that would um, create breeding opportunities for the Gages Egyptian mosquito. So that the division is ramping up its activities. We are trying to seek to ensure that where we have issues with drains that need to be rehabilitated, for example. Over the years, infrastructure lasts for a particular period of time. Over the years, drains fail and so on. Some drains cave in. And sometimes in those kind of situations, we have settling of water and pooling and so on. So we're trying to see how best we can treat with those situations. We. We also, also, as a division, have responsibility for the URP, Unemployment Relief Program, which is a significant environmental program, in, in, including the cleaning of beaches and so on. And we have, we, we would make our workers in that program, or environmental workers, not just um, heighten the activities in those areas, but we, we can make them available, for, for example, in terms of the clearing of empty lots, or even in terms of assisting senior citizens or, or persons differently able who may have challenges in terms of treating with managing their, their, their surroundings, managing their environment. And so the division is willing to play, to play its role. We have a, as a division, we have responsibility for a number of public buildings. And uh, the division in recent in recent days, um, we would have taken note of that. And we would have had our, our, our um, health and safety people going out, um, going out to inspect the different buildings of the division, uh, the different buildings that the division utilizes around the island, ensuring that corrective measures were put, up and put in place where there are, there are issues with any of these sites. And of course, the, the division is seeking to provide as much information as possible to its staff and the members of pu the public that, that, that interact with us in terms of the, 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 the ADs Egypt I control. Of course, the, the secretary would have noted, and, and we all have to we would have to take on board the fact that what is required is really an effort from all of us. 
all of us have a role to play, whether that role that we play as individuals in ensuring that what takes place at our, at our homes, at our residents and so on, um, that we don't create a breeding ground for the, for the, for the Aedes aegypti. But it also, it also creates situations where we, we, where we can, as people, have greater collaboration because it's not just each individual by themselves. We mentioned the issue of empty lots. It means that those of us who own properties that we have not built on or we're not ready to build on and so on, we, we, we need to take and give some consideration for the people who live there that we, that we, that we keep that property in a, in a state where it doesn't impact upon, it doesn't create this breeding, breeding situation for, for, the, for the mosquito and therefore pose a danger to, to the, to the neighbours there. Um, sometimes you have situations where we, that we encounter very much as a division where there is a water course, natural kind of water course that passes through many different properties and sometimes the drainage situation there may require that we have to, 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 do, a, to do a drain and sometimes you know you have situations where people don't cooperate, one or two persons may decide that they don't want that drain passing by their property. And you create a challenge there for all the persons that live there. And, people, and we have to become more mature as a population. We have to take those kind of things on board. We have to collaborate. We have to cooperate. If you own an old car and you, you know, have no longer use, have, have use for it and so on, before all public health has to come around, we must be responsible for saying we need to get that, we need to get that move. We need to take that where it's supposed to, where it's supposed to go. The, the, as I said, the division is um, the division of health. It's doing an excellent job in terms of providing um, with disposal services to the population. And we have to ensure we use those services correctly. Too many of us sometimes take, the short, take a shortcut or take the easy way out and rather than utilize the services as they should, we, we just, our, our intention is to just get the garbage out of our house and we don't care where, 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 where it goes as long as it's not at home, at, at, at our home. We, just, we have to be careful now about disposal of, of um, containers, food containers, beverage containers all of those that provide opportunities. So it's really about the population getting on board and each of us doing the best that we can. We have situations, for example, where in terms of we're now in the dry season, which may be one of the driest of dry seasons. And of course, I know many homeowners, householders will be concerned now about storage of water, but of course, in so doing, we have to be very careful in this particular situation because we know that um, depending on how the water is stored and so on, it can again create opportunities for breeding of the mosquito. And hence, we are in the division right now, we are pursuing an initiative with the Ministry of Public Utilities in Trinidad through the Utilities Assistance Program, where either through the ministry or as part of the assemblies, uh, assemblies program, we can provide water tanks to needy households so that people would not have to store waters in some, in, in some of the kinds of situations that people, that people do. And as I talk about water, while I'm on my feet, Mr. Presiding Officer, I would want to take the opportunity to just give a reminder to the population that we are in trying, we are now in trying circumstances where, where, where our water supply is concerned. Uh, it is very likely to continue to be so for the few months, for the months ahead, like it have a very challenging dry season, and, we, and I want to take every opportunity that I can to ask the, the citizens of Tobago that we all, we all, in our own way, seek to conserve water where possible. Because, as I said, we know the challenges are there. We, we have a situation where the main source serving Southwest Tobago is operating at about 15% capacity. That is a very serious situation. And, and, I, and WASA are making efforts to be able to supplement the situation, but some of those efforts are going to take a, a, time, a bit of time to happen. And therefore, each of us, in whatever possible way we can, we have to conserve water. This is, this is one situation I think would be one of the most challenging situations ever facing us where water, where water availability is concerned. And, and we in the division want to take every opportunity to warn the population, let us conserve water, let us in our own way um, see how best we can optimize the use of the little that we have. 
Uh, so, Mr. Presiding Officer, to come back to the motion, it is one that um, I, am, I am very pleased to support because in the circumstances, the approach to treating with the Aegis Egypt time mosquito is, is, is really a, an approach that we haven't taken treating with other situations like that, including some of our other problems that we have, whether we talk about rodents and, and, and things like that. It is really about us as a society seeking to maintain basic minimum standards where, where cleanliness is concerned, where sanitation is concerned. And if we do that, then we can keep the population levels of, of, of dangerous um, organisms like the Aegis aegypti at a level where, as I said, the, the gentleman would have said that outbreaks happen, they're inevitable, but epidemics, you can prevent them. And so therefore, this cannot be just about the fact that Zika is the current disease of the day, uh, if you want to call it that, because you know, um, we, to, we observe that in these times, for the last many years, almost every year, some virus or the other takes center stage and, and everybody becomes very concerned about. But as I said, it has to be an approach that is not just limited to this, but it's an, an approach that we continue, that we have to practice throughout. Because of course, we in the Tobago House of Assembly have, has been living with the mantra of clean, green, safe and serene for a very long time. And if you, can't ask, you can't ask to be more clean or to be more green in, in terms of um, the approach that we are adopting to manage the Aegis of Japan mosquito. As I said, my division is squarely on board. We, are, we, we, have, we have made ourselves available to collaborate with the Division of Health and Social Services. We are working in our own way in-house to create, to, 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 to be part of the program that we, that we have an, an environment that is not conducive to, to the breeding of um, the Aedes aegypti. And in that, in that way, I, as I said, this is a motion that any reasonable person would want to support. And, and thus, Mr. Presiding Officer, I want to thank you for the opportunity to have to speak, that I have to have I had to speak. And as I sit again, I want to be able to reiterate that, uh, to reiterate that I am in support of the motion. And, and thanks, thanks for the opportunity. Secretary, Division of Community Development and Culture. Mr. Presiding Officer, I thank you for allowing me to stand in support of my colleague in the Division of Health and Social Services in regards to the strategies and the integrative approach towards dealing with the Aedes aegypti mosquito and the current threats to our environment. I must commend the previous speakers, the Secretary of Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities, but more so I want to commend Assemblyman, representative for Black Rock Wind Spring Garden. for her eloquence and comprehensive overview of the dreaded diseases facing us and the processes and systems instituted to control the vector that threatens our existence as human beings and as people of the world. Diseases are part and parcel of life. As you heard, uh, the uh, Mr. Melville say, uh, and he quoted from someone that uh, we say outbreaks are inevitable, but epidemics are optional, and that's so true. But diseases are not only limited to the human body. In fact, the word itself, dis-ease, will tell you that any situation that causes a dysfunction 
to the order of the day of what society considers natural and normal is disease. And therefore, these days, we can say we have a lot of diseases around coming at us. It's Zika, chikungunya, dengue, H1N1, HIV AIDS, all of them. We have diseases of the economy called recession. And from time to time, we even have diseases of politics. And as I say that, let me take the opportunity to wish our brothers and sisters in Jamaica a safe election day today. And may God provide for the leader uh, who is supposed to be in place to emerge in a safe way. I know that they have had some violence, but I wish them all the best. But the formula for dealing with diseases is the same in every case. Prevention is better than cure. In the case of cures, it becomes a survival of the fittest. Either the host survives or the disease dies with the host. The disease, diseases in general can be debilitating and a lot of resources can be exhausted in either bringing relief to the affected or developing a cure. We must recognize it is more costly to families involved, the communities, and even the health sector that becomes overwhelmed from the amount of human resource and financial resources to continue the fight for lives when indeed we are dealing it, are taking it from a curative point of view. The positive side though is that diseases, if and when severe enough, lead to innovation and collaboration in finding solutions. And that is why in a medical fraternity, we often say prevention is better than cure. It is proven that in most cases, if not all, preventative measures are far less costly to a system and therefore should be the first line of attack. I must therefore reiterate my commendation for the Division of Health and Social Services for their approach, the integrated management approach that the health sector has taken with regard to the threat of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Where all others are focusing on Zika across the region, they are focusing on the cause, which has the potential for many more diseases, uh, many more threats to life, like the dengue, many more debilitating uh, impact like the chikungunya. And therefore, we are focusing on controlling the vector the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And that is why, you know, you, I, when I listen to my colleague and all the areas that are being, uh, all the efforts that are being made in all of the areas, I am really heartened and feel good that we have a plan and a plan that can work. In the preventative approach taken by them, it is calling for all hands to be on deck. All divisions have a role to play. Uh, Non-governmental organizations, faith-based organizations, community groups and organizations, cultural bodies, every single family, every single home, every single individual has a role to play in ensuring that we can overcome this threat. There are those who need to carry the message and, there are those, and all of us need to ensure that we don't get bite. I was therefore heartened by the recent turnout by the Tobago House of Assembly face-to-face -face meetings that the public health, where the public health unit was actually giving was actively giving presentations on the current threats of the mosquito 
and how to prevent getting bitten. It's quite a comprehensive presentation that they do, and I think it was well received by members of the public who attended, and they even asked for further information which they received. And therefore, on behalf of health, I want to urge for greater collaboration across the board, wherever we have group meetings, to ensure that they are included so we can make the information more widespread. And so perhaps, Mr. Presiding Officer, in your legislative outreach meetings in the community, you too can include health as part of that um, caravan to assist in carrying the message. Let me commend you for the initiative and also take, go further in offering the services of community development and culture and perhaps all of the representatives in assisting you in mobilizing the people to come out and hear more about the legislative uh, process that we have in our midst. As we all enter leaner times, given the recession, we all have to find ways of greater collaborative efforts in what we do to maximize the limited resources that we all have. That is why the Division of Community Development and Culture has wholeheartedly endorsed the project and the activities being done in the uh, health sector by providing our field officers who are involved in dissemination of the information through pamphlets and mobilization of community leaders to ensure that they understand the message and that they could take it forward in their communities. We also are making every effort to have our community centers available and at a standard where meetings can be readily held. I certainly hope that the representative for Mariah and the people of Mariah appreciated the recently installed ceiling over the last two weeks at the successful meeting they just had. As part of the integrated plan, uh, though all my colleagues cannot speak today, I know that they are all on board and everyone is prepared to play their part. The communities and residents have also come out to participate in the removal of debris and partnering with the public health field workers in cleaning up their communities. As simple as it seems, Mr. Presiding Officer, cleaning up is one of the most effective ways to control the vector. And that is something we can all be involved in. I wish at this point to thank all those who are part of the health sector, front and center in this fight. It is unfortunate that many times we don't recognize the good and the efforts, the time and efforts that, that are being made and the good outcomes but sometimes we only tend to hear about the bad. And I just really want to commend them for their time and effort on this initiative. It is a lot of work. If you listened well to all the plans that are being done on this initiative, it is a lot of work and they must be commended for their work. Of course, there's always room for improvement. Um, but again, I say thank you to them. Uh, as we all heard as well, there are international standards for controlling the vector at five. And Tobago is not just at four, it is not just at three, we are at 2.5, which is 50%, you know, uh, over um, the, the standards of expectations. It is through their efforts in launching the campaign before the carnival that allowed us to have a safe carnival where all infectious diseases are, con are concerned. Again, a lot of work 
was done. Let me take the opportunity to congratulate all those involved in the carnival season this year for the success that it has been. I maintain that carnival cannot be just viewed as a piece, but has to be judged as a whole product. And as a whole, there was significant improvement in the quality of the mass, the standard of the calypsos, and certainly the record in the number of pans uh, participating and qualifying to Trinidad. I must commend the Secretary of Tourism for the tourist ship arrival that uh, landed on Carnival Tuesday. And by extension, I must thank my staff led by Administrator Toppin and Ms. Glenda Rose Lane for providing an entertaining and engaging uh, mini carnival on the Tuesday morning of arrival, one that ended in an afternoon of splendor. And therefore, we should all feel good as Tobagonians about the carnival as we continue to shape the product. It is in this context that the division will be hosting a public consultation on how do we improve our festivals on the island? How do we improve the product? And therefore, uh, this must take into consideration the threats uh, that seem to come about just the time that we have carnival every year. Uh, the threats from the environment, of course, the mosquitoes, the H1N1, HIV, and otherwise. We hope that the health sector will see themselves as critical to this conversation and send persons to attend at that time. I want to, as we are talking about carnival, I want to again commend the Division of Health and Social Services for their sweeping win at the interdepartment show. Just as all 12, they have swept all two. Please commend them. <laughs> but the reason I want to emphasize this is because the Calypso that won, you know, didn't go along the lines of the bordering uh, jocular in any way, but was a powerful message for HIV and AIDS. And it was amazing that if you were there to hear the crowd participate in singing the Calypso, was a, which was a Calypso about prevention. And therefore, I believe that there is a role for more of our Calypsonians to lift the content of their Calypsos to help us shape society once more, having healthy minds and healthy bodies. And that winning Calypso also sent a message that the people, members of the public, they are prepared to accept those messages in that form. And so I therefore want to urge our um, persons within that area, those who sing, for us to come up with more content that helps us to shape our healthy minds, healthy bodies, and healthy communities and families. Mr. Presiding Officer, as we prepare for another exciting heritage production, I believe the message of don't get bite is perhaps more critical as we will be traversing communities for the signature indigenous festival on this island. I am therefore urging all communities to get on board in the cleanup of their communities, clear standing water and old debris. And I look forward to the repellent stations being used as part of the festival. Mr. Presiding Officer, in the old days, we swept our yards. Even if they were dirt yards, we swept them as a symbol of our commitment to good hygiene and cleanliness. 
Let us reflect and continue to act in accordance with our mantra to being clean, green, safe, and serene. In closing, I wish to go back to a conversation on Zika. The Executive Council, many times we take hard decisions week after week. And like the health sector, sometimes we don't hear about you know, the good decisions we take, but we hear about the perceived poor decision that we may have made. But whilst there are many theories out there about Zika and the malformations in the, uh, during pregnancy that end up in microcephaly uh, areas, um, and, and, and that is seen in the area in Brazil, people question why was Zika around for so many years in Africa and they never saw any of these outcomes. And one of the theories, in fact, is the fact, one of the theories put forward is the fact that bioengineered approaches have been taken to getting rid of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And that perhaps has made the mosquito a greater threat to pregnant women. And while the jury continues to deliberate on that issue, I wish to commend my colleagues for taking a decision over a year ago not to accept a proposal that was being considered in Trinidad for use of bioengineering techniques to eradicate mosquitoes. And I really want to commend my colleagues for the research that we continue to do in making the decisions at that table week after week. Give yourselves a little pound on the table, colleagues. <laughs> Mr. Presiding Officer, sometimes the basic strategies of cleanliness, good hygiene, moderation, and care go a longer way in preventing us from the ills that are looming. Let us again uh, commend the uh, Assemblyman for uh, Black Rock Wim Spring Garden and her division of health and social services, her staff, all other divisions, all other residents across this island who have come on board to collaborate in this fight and thank them uh, for all that they are doing as part of this integrated approach to don't get bite. Mr. Presiding Officer, I fully support this motion. Secretary for Settlements and Labor. Thank you very much, Mr. Presiding Officer. <clears throat> and you'd forgive me this afternoon because I suspect that I have a a frog in my throat, <clears throat> but I will try my best to jump it out before the evening is out. I rise in support of this motion, Mr. Presiding Officer, to, to give credence to the move of the motion, Mr. Presiding Officer, the member for Black Rock Wim Spring Garden. <clears throat> and as I stand, allow me to acknowledge the work that the member and her assistant, uh, a member for uh, <clears throat> Mason Hall, has, has been doing and continues to do in the assembly, Mr. Presiding Officer, because as we stand here and we, we speak to this particular motion, as we stand here and we speak to this particular motion, Mr. Presiding Officer, it is incumbent on all of us to acknowledge, Mr. Presiding Officer, it's incumbent on all of us to acknowledge that this virus is a serious one. And we all have the responsibility, Mr. Presiding Officer, to bring the awareness to the populace of Tobago. So as members of the Tobago House of Assembly, we are doing our part. And we are responsible for ensuring 
that the information gets out there, Mr. Presiding Officer. But what is incumbent upon the populace, all Tobagonians, Mr. Presiding Officer, is to also do their part. Because we will disseminate the information, we will do what is necessary to ensure that preventative measures are taking place. But homeowners, business operators, members of the community, Tobagonians as a whole, Mr. Presiding Officer, have a responsibility to do their part as well to prevent the spreading of this particular virus and the mosquito breeding as a matter of fact. So as we work in collaboration and in unison with the Division of Health and Social Services to combat the Aedes aegypti mosquito, we continue to work tirelessly to eradicate the breeding spaces at present, we are disseminating information to all our staff in the Division of Settlements and Labor and our clients to ensure that they are fully aware as to the preventative measures to safeguard their families and their communities and to treat with preventing of the breeding of the mosquito. Mr. Presiding Officer, cleaning of drains and landscaping of green spaces will continue from a divisional standpoint. However, Mr. Presiding Officer, as I said before, it is the responsibility of homeowners to ensure that they take the necessary action to avoid their homes becoming breeding spaces for mosquitoes. And there are a number of measures that can be employed. For instance, Tobago has vast, a vast expanse of swamp lands that is part of our wetlands ecological system. And as such, we need to ensure that those ecological causeways are cleaned regularly. And I'm quite certain my colleague, Secretary with Responsibility for the Environment, Secretary Adams, will take cognizance of that and has been doing that. The natural ecosystems, Mr. Presiding Officer, once maintained, will, con will be able to assist with controlling the insect population. However, with the introduction of foreign materials such as trash, toxic waste, and household waste, sometimes can affect these ecological systems from functioning their natural potential. And therefore, I'm certain that once these causeways are cleaned and cleared, they will do their part as well. Old and abandoned vehicles mentioned by my colleague, Secretary Melville, need to be taken out of communities, Mr. Presiding Officer. And the move of the motion would have spoken to that as well. The division is working tirelessly in the Division of Health and Social Services to treat with derelict vehicles in communities, and we are partnering with the division in that regard. Potholes and clogged drains in areas not frequented by vehicular traffic is another simple but important aspect that we need to look at, Mr. Presiding Officer. Mr. Presiding Officer, the frequent removing of garbage and clearing of illegal dumping sites is also critical in the fight to the proliferation of breeding sites and, and mosquitoes such as the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Burning of bushes and clearing of the areas can also aid in smoking out the breeding sites of mosquitoes. I am not advocating, Mr. Presiding Officer, in any way that individuals start bushfires I am informed that the fire department gives individuals permission to, to manage, to start and manage small fires. So in that light, anyone who wants to do such can seek the relevant permission from the fire department. Mr. Presiding, Mr. Presiding Officer, creating and building the awareness is one aspect in combating the Zika virus. 
But we as a people, all Tobagonians, must take responsibility for themselves, their families, and their respective living spaces. We can stand here in this house and speak to all the initiatives and strategies being employed to ensure that we eradicate the breeding spaces of the, of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And we can do all in our power at the Executive Council level. However, if the perifocal officers do not do their part, if the fire officers do not do their part, if homeowners do not do their part, if business operators do not do their part, if the entire populace of Tobago do not do their part, then somebody or some people will get bitten. So Mr. Presiding Officer, if we want to avoid getting bitten, just as the mantra says and the tagline for the campaign, don't get bite, I humbly suggest that we all do our part. Because we cannot do this on our own, Mr. Presiding Officer, but with the collaboration of all homeowners and business owners, we can indefinitely, undoubtedly do it together. I thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer. Leader of Assembly Business. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Presiding Officer. And I really want to take this opportunity to commend my colleagues, the Councillor and the Secretary of Infrastructure and Public Utilities, our Councillor and Secretary of the of Community Development and Culture and our Councillor and Secretary of Settlements and Labor. I really want to bring this out and big up our Councillor. So today is Councillor's Day. <laughs> this is the presiding officer. And I really want to commend the way in which my colleagues, members of the Executive Council, and our assemblymen in buying into the responsibility for managing the control of mosquitoes on the island. And really, it's not, it's not only about managing the mosquitoes, but managing the mindset for working together collaboratively and coordinating our work in such a way that we create the kind of movement on the island to keep the Zika virus away as well as chikungunya, dengue, and H1N1. And so uh, today, we celebrate that in terms of the way we move forward because it is not only about those members who spoke today, who we've heard and heard their contribution, but all of our, our secretaries and assistant secretaries are committed in getting this work done. And so, Mr. Residing Officer, I really want to take the time off to commend them. And of course, to commend again the members of staff of the Division of Health and Social Services and the Tobago Regional Health Authority and the way in which the public, our members of their our community leaders, our members out there who are working collaboratively with us. And that is what we, we call the integrated management system. All of the assembly and all of our society working together with the same goal. And so, Mr. Presiding Officer, I just want to, to uh, really briefly speak to some of the collaborative efforts that we have on board. Uh, for example, the Office of the Chief Secretary, where the members are committed 
um, to assist with audio and video productions of the Zika ads, uh, produce stories to feature on Let's Talk Tobago surrounding control of mosquito breeding sites, assist with developing a media marketing plan, assist in disseminating information to all stakeholders via email and so on, and of course, uh, of the Office of the Chief Secretary, we speak of a team as work as an integral part of the Tobago Public Health Response Team in assisting in creating a crisis communication plan, uh, drafting tools of dissemination, flyers, posters, TV ads, bumper stickers, and so on, assist in sharing information on the crisis strategy via interviews and webinars. Mr. Presiding Officer, we've heard the Division of Community Development and Culture in their commitment for officers in the field who can assist in disseminating information to our groups, our NGOs, our FBOs, faith-based organizations, and individuals within the communities. Of course, the use of the com community center to host meetings and to develop programs and to really sustain the community spirit in the whole cleanup uh, campaign and information as how not to get bitten. Uh, Mr. Presiding Officer, of course, there are other programs that we're hoping we can work together on, such as the singers and actors uh, under the division's purview to be utilized to create jingles and skits to publicize the message. And so, uh, print the message of don't get by it at the back of their event flyers. Those are some of the ways uh, I know that they are committed the Division of Tourism and Transportation assist in disseminating information on social media and website. As you know, this is Destination Tobago, and therefore we really must protect the destination uh, in terms of the economic viability for tourism, as well as we always speak of taking care of our people first and we can now share our place with other people. And so, Mr. Presiding Officer, assisting in disseminating information, especially to the stakeholders, to the hotels, to the other tourism destinations. And so, really share with brochures, posters, various stakeholders, both internally and externally. Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport, meeting with the principals, with the teachers, and out of the mouth of our babes and sucklings, we get the message out there. And so we continue to work with our, our schools in changing the mindset, in creating the kind of uh, recycling program, partnering with education to create that kind of uh, uh, program for cleaning, cleaning the place. As you know, we've met some people who said, you know, long ago, the children used to clean up and they sang bits of paper, bits of paper lying on the floor, and they don't think that is happening. Well, we want that to continue to happen, and so our children would continue to be a part of this process. We've just heard our, our Secretary of Settlements and Labor and the contribution he has made. And you know, uh, Mr. Presiding Officer, the one time that I text my, my colleague and I said, you have plenty time. <laughs> you have plenty time today, you know, but I'm really sorry about his throat, Mr. Presiding Officer. So our division of settlement in the way uh, you give support in terms of your housing developments and your work within that process, we really want to, to commend you. Our Division of Agriculture, um, Marina Fierce, 
marketing and the environment, and in the way that you provide support and working together in treating with the environment, in treating with the dissemination of information, and the, the way in which your division would give support in introducing fish into ponds. And so we see this as a way of eating the mosquito larva, and I think that that is really, really creative and innovative. <laughs> and so the assembly legislature um, assists in disseminating information to staff to your 12 electoral districts and the public at large, especially at plenary, plenary sittings, and one week will be designated to change all screensavers to the don't get by it ad. And so we want to commend the Assembly Legislative Secretariat for the support. And so I can go on and on, you know, we have the Tobago <laughs> Hotel and the Tourism Association. But well, all of this is to say that we are all in this together. And the, my biggest appeal at this time is for all of us to buy in with the same message on the same page. Don't get by it. Clean up your surroundings. We're all in this together. And we are everybody's keeper. And so, uh, Mr. Presiding Officer, again, I beg to move. Honorable members, the question is, whereas the Aedes aegypti mosquito is a threat to the Caribbean region, as it is the main vector that transmits the viruses that cause dengue, chikungunya, and Zika, and whereas the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, has supported its member states by enhancing regional surveillance and the agency's capacity for vector-borne diseases testing by monitoring regional and global developments, partnering with regional and international stakeholders, and providing updates for agencies of health and other key stakeholders. And whereas the basic approach to vector-borne diseases is by controlling the proliferation of the vector in this case, the Aedes aegypti mosquito. And whereas for years, the Tobago House of Assembly has implemented numerous strategies, which include controlling and monitoring of the vector, building public awareness for prevention, early detection, and support for victims, be it resolved that this house support the strong measures and strategies instituted by the assembly to control the mosquito population on the island, and be it further resolved that this robust integrative management approach be sustained and intensified with the collaboration of all divisions of the Tobago House of Assembly and other government agencies. And be it further resolved that while the Tobago House of Assembly continues to fulfill its mandate in response to this threat, that this House urge all residents to adopt appropriate measures to control the mosquito population, to prevent mosquito bites in at-risk individuals, especially pregnant women, and to collaborate in minimizing the potential dangers associated with this threat. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The motion is therefore carried. Leader of Assembly Business. Mr. Presiding Officer, I beg to move that this house do now adjourn to a day to be fixed. Members, the question is that this house now stand adjourned to a date to be fixed. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. The motion is carried.
this house now stands adjourned to a date to be fixed.